Way ahead of you. What the hell was that? Invincibles back in episode 1 dropped 24 hours early, picking up where season 1 left off while setting up some much bigger things for Invincible, the Guardians of the Globe and the family Grayson and maybe even the planet Earth itself. As always, I'm Al, this is the Geek In Review and if you haven't seen the first episode of the setting series, this is just all going to be spoilers. But before we get to that, just to say thanks for taking the time to choose to watch this channel. I really appreciate it and if you haven't done it already, hit subscribe and leave a like as well. So let's get to it. So the episode opens with the immortal fighting Mark and like his dad, he doesn't see him as much of a threat. And speaking of his dad, Omni-Man shows up mid-fight and dispatches the immortal again and Mark helps him and it seems that they're on some sort of rampage. And Omni-Man has a brief moment of reflection, disappointed that the Immortal didn't agree with his point of view, and Mark has now joined his dad, welcoming Earth into the Viltrum Empire. People of Earth, we know. You all feel like we're the bad guys because my dad and I took over your planet. And if you remember where season one ended, I can understand why you're a little bit thrown off by this, but it does get explained pretty much straight away and in a way that makes sense as well and is going to have huge implications for the rest of the season. There's mass devastation on Earth as they fought back against these two heroes and Mark is running an address to the planet on a loop saying that things are now going to be better as Earth is going to be some sort of utopia once the rest of the Viltrumites arrive. One of the surviving humans and part of the resistance, Angstrom Levy, watches this as he goes to find the remaining guardians of the globe, Eve, Robot and a few others, and we learn that Rexplode has died in the battle. Now, it all might seem a little bit familiar, and for me, it kinda did. It's got a very similar feel to the introduction of the X-Men film Days of Future Past. And you're asking yourself, why is this all so different from season one? Well, the twist is, this is an alternative Earth where Mark joined his father instead of fighting him to save the planet. So, Invincible and Omni-Man are getting rid of the remaining heroes in order to set it up for the rest of the Viltrumites arriving, so that they can take control. They find the remaining heroes, killing Robot and leaving Eve paralysed, so yeah, very days of future past, and this version of Mark is way more brutal than the one that we're used to. Before they wipe out the remaining resistance, which it seems that they're doing all over the world, Mark tells Angstrom that they need to die in order to smooth this all over. I missed lunch because of that riot in Bangkok. Yep. Before Mark can kill Angstrom, he disappears mysteriously through a portal, but they don't question it too much and just continue with the rampage. Meanwhile, the Mark that we followed in Season 1 back in the main universe is still doing his superhero thing, albeit a little bit low-key. Saving lives, stopping disasters and criminals and dealing with what his father did. After the devastation of the season 1 finale, Earth in America is recovering and rebuilding and the world is adjusting to Omni-Man, its greatest hero, betraying them and basically destroying the city of Chicago. Mark and his mum are trying to heal like everyone else and you can tell what happened has brought them actually closer. Mark's trying to fit back into his life as this is set about a month after the end of season 1, so he's now going back to school and trying to pick up where he's left off, telling people of course that his dad died in the attack. But Mark, being a good guy, blames himself for all the people that he couldn't save in Chicago, but Amber reassures him that fighting Nolan was the best course of action as it did actually help save the planet, even if he couldn't save everyone on the planet. He's anxious to get back into some proper superhero action, so he meets with Cecil wanting to work for him, obviously plagued by the guilt, but Cecil wants him to take a back seat and readjust to his normal life before he becomes invincible again. I don't need your permission to be a superhero. You know who else said that to me? And you can tell that Cecil doesn't really trust him after what happened as Nolan betrayed him for years and he's worried that the same thing is going to happen with Mark again. 
And Mark's worried about this himself. He reconnects with Adam Eve, telling her he feels lost and worrying that there's a potential that he could become like his dad and go in some sort of mass rampage. And the very first villains that we've seen in season one are back as well, the Mauler twins, but they're behind bars plotting their escape as usual. When a portal opens, allowing them to, well, escape. And they're transported to the destroyed Earth that we've seen at the start of the episode as Angstrom looks over the destruction, telling them it's not their world and that he needs their help as he's a pacifist who only uses his powers for good. So working with them is a bit of a moral dilemma for him. And Angstrom's got a plan to set all of this right, not just in his world, but in every world. He needs their help to complete a machine he's been working on and he explains his power that he can access every dimension and there's a limitless amount opening up the multiverse for the Invincible franchise. He tells the Mauler twins that in most realities Mark joins his father in dominating Earth and that taking the best part of every dimension means that he can help them all. He's collected a lot of variants of himself but they don't have his powers, they just have his mental abilities. And he basically wants to combine all their knowledge in his mind to help solve, well, everything. We're talking cures for diseases, solution to hunger, and he's taken these versions and hidden them across the multiverse to access their knowledge to help make his plan work. Using the machine that the Maulers originally designed, basically putting hundreds if not thousands of Angstrom Levy's memories into the one mind. Back on main earth, yes, that's what I'm going to call it because it's too confusing with what Marvel are doing with the MCU and the multiverse as well, so you're just going to have to bear with me on this one. The Guardians are taking on super criminals as always fighting a giant. Robot is still leading the team of Black Samson, Rexplode, Monster Girl, Duplicate, you know who they are, and Cecil isn't very happy about the team's performance. They're not doing as they should be or not having the success that they should be and you can tell that Cecil is sort of worried about how this whole superhero thing's going. He blames it on a failure of leadership, putting the immortal in charge and adding a new teammate called Bulletproof. In this version of the Guardians of the Globe aren't as tight as the ones that we've previously seen. Most of them are still young adults or even teenagers because if you remember all the way back those years ago in season 1 episode 1 that ended with the original Guardians of the Globe getting taken out by Omni-Man. You can tell like maybe a lot of fans in the real world Cecil does have superhero fatigue but he's still doing his job trying to defend America, the planet, all that good stuff that we like. He locates the Mauler twins in this dimension who are building another version of the machine for Angstrom, recruiting Mark to help take them down. So basically, there's multiple machines in multiple dimensions hooked up to multiple Angstroms, thousands of versions of them processing all their knowledge and tying them into one Angstrom's mind in order to find the solutions that he needs to solve every dimension's problems. But while the transfer is going on, Mark shows up to take them down, stopping at mid-process, and before Angstrom can explain his plan, he summons other versions of the Mauler twins from other dimensions to help overpower Mark. And if you've read the comic books, you know that this is foreshadowing a big event later on, but I'm not going to spoil that. In order to stop the fight, Angstrom frees himself from the machine to stop the Maulers killing Mark, overloading it, causing the entire machine and the structure to explode around them. And although he saved the day and he's taken out a hell of a lot of Mauler twins, Mark doesn't like all the blood that he has on his hands, worrying that this is all going to lead to him turning out like his dad. But while Mark is mulling over his moral dilemma, it cuts back to the ruin of the Mauler's lair, where Angstrom has surprisingly survived the explosion but is now extremely deformed and gone insane because all the different versions of him being combined in his head are basically ripping it apart. And yeah, it's got a very interesting look. It's very Krang in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but Angstrom has now sort of become the villain that he was avoiding all along. Because when you think about it, thousands of versions of this guy, at least some of them have to be a little bit evil and a little bit selfish. So although he's kind of got what he wanted, it's not the results and he blames Invincible aka Mark for all this is happening. So not only does he hate him in every dimension except for this one, he now hates him in this one as well. 
He swears revenge on Mark, disappearing into another dimension, and that's kind of where the episode ends. Now, it's been years since we got the first season of Invincible, and this show is back with a boom. Picking up exactly where it left off, asking some questions that we needed some answers to, and Mark dealing with who his father is, what his actions meant, and the possibility that he might go down the same road himself. And as I said at the start of the video, this is a great first episode setting up some new faces, some new stakes, and things that we haven't seen before. We get a lot of familiar faces back along with a new villain and a multiverse arc that even though it's the first episode, for me at least, is more interesting than what the MCU is doing with its whole multiverse thing. Fans of the comic book know where this is going to go and this episode sets up a huge arc for Mark's character and the non-comic book readers can look forward to it as well. Because, in my opinion at least, Invincible is one of the best superhero stories ever told. This show is going to go places that you can't imagine, with a size and scale that you can't imagine, and a story arc that you can't imagine, and it is a complete story for Mark Grayson and his family and all the characters in this world. I don't want to get into too many spoilers of the comic books as I'm going to be posting videos reviewing them starting next week, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it, but as you can tell, I really liked the first episode of Invincible, although it was pretty light on the action all the way up until the ending, I think it's one of the strongest comic book properties that we've seen in the last few years. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Did you like episode 1? Was it worth the wait? And if you haven't read the comics, where do you think this is all going? I'm going to be reviewing this show every week, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. And let's say if you haven't read the comics, I'm really interested in your theories and all this. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, my name's Al. Thanks for watching.